Hello and welcome to a Keysmash Studios tutorial. Today we're going to talk about importing layers in Photoshop into Unity to create really cool level design. This is an art scene that I've made. Um, it's nothing super special, but it, it is a bunch of different layers. And all of the layers, as you can see on the side here, are labeled and placed in an order such that we get this scene in front of us. We're going to try to import this exact replica into Unity as a playable level. I've organized some things into folders, things like trees and the main background of the level. So we can see if I hide the main background, we have this very simplistic level with two trees on it. But once we add in the background, we get this feeling of depth and layers and, and things of that nature. I should say that this process is not finished. I'm well aware that this art is not done yet, um, but I wanted to sh show how the process worked prior to getting another 40 layers added of detail. So this is a very raw, simplistic version of the level. More stuff will be added later, but I want to show how the process works prior to all that detail being added. I'd also like to take this moment to say join our Discord. It's in the link in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, it really does help us out. So with that said, let's get into it. What I want to talk about is how to get all of these layers out at the appropriate size so we can put them into Unity. And the way that we want to do that is through a script. We can do it without a script. I will show you how to do it both ways. But with a script, and it's really simple to download, uh, with a script we can do this a lot faster. So here is the script. I will put this link in the description below. Um, you can come down to this page, hit download a zip, and it downloads a little folder that has the Adobe uh, script in it. So once you download it, you go to File, you go to Scripts, you go to Browse. You find the script file, and then there's a JSX. This is the file type of a script. Export layers to file fast. You load that into Photoshop. It takes a couple of seconds and it opens up to this window here. So this window here is essentially where we want to do everything. So I'm going to browse to the correct folder. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder because this is level one. Wow, if I could, I could type today, that would be great. So we have a level one folder. We're going to go into level one folder. This is where we're going to dump all the PNGs. The file names we're going to keep as the layer names. We're going to strip the extension. And we're going to use underscores instead of spaces because that is better for lots of memory management in game engines. So as far as the file type goes, we could go PNG8, but we'd lose a lot of detail, almost especially on some of the gradients. So we're going to go PNG24, include transparency. It doesn't have to be interlaced. And we're going to say run. So what this does is it collects all the layers and then it's exporting them. So I have 39 layers to export as of right now. Once this level's finished, we might have closer to 80. Okay, so after it finishes, uh, you get a little message that says it finishes. That's how you do it with the script. It's really fast. Um, 39 PNGs were just saved. If I navigate to the Google Drive off screen really quick. So here are all the PNGs of the various parts. So we have all of our background mountains and uh, hills leading up to the mountains. We have tree branches, we have tree leaves. All of them are the same size and we can import this whole thing into Unity. So that is one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it, which is inherently supported by Photoshop, is you go to File, Export, layers to files. So this does a similar thing. The file type is PNG. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, you can uncheck trim layers to keep them all as the same size or check trim layers to make them uh, smaller based on what objects are in the layer, but you'll have to manually place the things in the, in the level. So depending on the size of the level, you may want to do this. So as far as the size of this, lo this level is, if I go up here really quick to image canvas size, we'll see that this is almost 8K by 8K. So this is 7680 by 4500. 
I think it allows up to 8162, but don't count me on that. It's something in that range of a little over 8,000 pixels by 8,000 pixels is the maximum image that you can import into, into Unity, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's save that. We're going to minimize this, and we're going to go into Unity because everything else at this point is in Unity. So I have a blank level here, and I have a folder to import all these things. So all I'm going to do is grab every single thing and drop that into this folder and import them all. All right, so all of them have been dropped in. And now we have every single layer in our level art that we need to do. And we can look at all of these layers. So for example, uh, if we open it up, we'll just see that this is just the dirt underground. Um, you know, this is just the sky over the top. And unfortunately, a moderately annoying Unity thing is that I cannot just click and drag all of these in here because then it wants to turn them into an animation, which we're not creating an animation. It's fairly intuitive for animation design for this to happen, but for level design, unfortunately, um, we have to drag them one by one. But we can just drag them all in and then we'll reset all of them. So I'm just going level layer by layer and we're just going to drag them all in. Doesn't matter location for right now. We will fix all of that at the same time. Almost lost where I was in the middle of that. All right, so now we have all the different layers placed in. And what we can do is we come up here to transform and we just zero them out. We'll see that they're all there. Uh, they're not in the right order, but they all are at the appropriate space and the appropriate size. Now, one thing I want to highlight is that they're all fuzzy. And this has something to do with how Unity compresses files. Um, that's pretty annoying, but there is a workaround for it. So I've selected every single image that's in our import thing, uh, and we're down on our inspector over here. If you're on PC, you're overriding for PC. If you're doing this for Android, you're overriding for Android. For right now, I'm just going to override for PC. And we're gonna drop this to 8,192 is the max pixels before this happens. So if we do that, we'll notice that nothing in the scene changes. That's because we need to hit apply and wait for a while. So I had to wait a little bit longer because I wanted to show you guys the gradient change uh, on the scene. Uh, so I imported them prior to doing that. Um, but now we can see we have to scroll in quite far, almost to the fuzz, to be able to see the, the gradient pixels. Um, as a whole, it works pretty well. And now everything in the scene is this 8K sort of, you know, almost 8K resolution. Um, but everything is not in the right order. So uh, we're going to do that one quick way. I'm going to create an, an empty that holds all of this... Uh, holds all of these these background components so so um, so this is our first section of this level I don't know if we'll have more more for this level or not but um, everything is inside this one child so now we can as a whole hide that whole tile or section so now what we need to do is compare our image here with Photoshop and obviously they're not the same uh, but there is a way to get them looking the same because you can simulate the layers in Photoshop in Unity and over here in the order layer we can see that so in our we just select one of these things go over here to the additional settings of the sprite renderer and we can see the order layer so the order layer can be positive as it comes further forward so if we want something to pop all the way out 
we give it a high order layer. If we want something to go all the way back, we give it a low order layer. So a negative 10 will be closer to the back, positive 10 will be closer to the front. And what we want to do with that is set these backgrounds and other layers in that spectrum. It can be anything we want in the spectrum to make sure the layers appear in the right order. So I'm going to start at negative 50 all the way in the back. And I'm going to move forward to zero being the player level. And then anything in the foreground, so there are things that are going to be in the foreground, is going to be greater than, than zero. So like anywhere between one to 50. So my sky background, this is the thing that's going to be all the way in the back, is negative 50. And I will put that all the way at the top. This is just an organization thing for, for me. I just like to have things in order. It's just a little OCD thing. So I will pull up Photoshop on my second monitor just so I can see. I'm comparing the layers here because I have them in the appropriate order. And I want to make sure that order is mirrored here in Unity. So for me, I have my sky background and then I have my far mountain background. So I find this in the, in the, in the inspector and I'm going to put this at negative 49. And I'm going to drag this right underneath sky background. So I'm going to be going down in, in, in layers from back to front. So then I find my next one. So I have far mountain background snow one. Or one snow, this one right here. So this one, we want this to appear on top of the mountain. So negative 48. And that's this snow that's on top of this mountain. It was already on top of it because it was zero as default, uh, but we just need to make sure that we have it at the appropriate level. And then we find far mountain background two. That's this one. And we're going to swap this one to Uh, negative 48 and then this one will be negative 47 I think you're catching the idea of what I'm doing so I'm gonna time-lapse this when I actually put this into the video so you'll be able to see me sorting through all of these uh, but it's not gonna be super exciting this is the slow tedious part of this uh, if there's interest let me know down below I may potentially make a script that automates this just let me know down below if you think this is a, a useful time. Otherwise, it's just kind of a necessary evil, so to speak. You and me hanging from the willow tree Quietly drifting in the open breeze Suddenly the wind blows you Alright, so I have placed all of them into the correct order, and uh, a few little interesting caveats. Um, I placed the, the trees, so there's two trees in this level, I placed them on the same levels, just as like a simplistic thing, there's no need to 
create new order layers for the sake of creating new order layers. These two are never going to overlap and they're going to function in the same purpose. So I went ahead and placed them on the same layers. But every individual component of the tree is on a separate layer. So like the shadows of the trunk, uh, the little, I don't know, animal hole at the top, the leaves, the branches, they're all on separate layers. And what this is going to allow us to do is create either a parallax effect, so meaning that everything in the scene, when you move the camera back and forth, so let's select the camera. Uh, this is our camera, and you're running around here. Right When you move the camera right now, everything moves at the same speed. So we could create a parallax effect where the things in the background don't move as fast as the things in the foreground. Or we can animate everything separately if we so choose. So if we want the trees to bob in the wind separate from the background, we're able to do that when we import into layers. And this is the real strength of being able to import into layers, is that literally everything in your scene, and we've created an entire scene, which, you know, well, not the greatest thing in the world, but this scene is a very usable level for us. And being able to edit every individual part of the scene down to like these little tiny mushrooms, if we want to animate those, we can do that. If we want to make the grass sway just a little bit, we can do that. That's that's something that's really kind of cool for us to be able to do with a with a background. And those little tiny animations, I've talked about it before on the on the channel. The attention to small details in a game can be the single most important thing that you do as a game designer. So everyone can make a game where you run past a tree. The difference that's going to separate your game out is when you run past a tree, you hear the collider, a wind sound plays, and uh, you know a branch moves. And then because a branch moves, you hear a bird chirp or something like that. Like that's going to separate your game out from the others. That small attention to detail that you'll be able to put in with a with a system like this where you have everything in the layer, that detail is what's going to make your game separate. With that said, I hope this has been helpful for trying to understand, you know, why you would do this, how to do this. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always more than happy to help. I'd love to see what you're making. So go ahead drop you know, a video link down in the description below. If you're uh, streaming, I'll check out your stream, whatever it is. By the way, check out our stream, twitch.tv slash Studios. I'll put a link in the description below. Whatever it is you're doing with game design, I'd love to see it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And hopefully we'll see you next week where we do something cool with these layers.